Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Board Boudoir Weekly, kind of a podcast, but not really. So today we have Judo Black Belt, James Lynn at the Boudoir, and today we're talking all about stick grappling, specifically stick takedowns, and even more specifically than that, takedowns from the clinch, from stick fighting, off of an overhook. In this episode, we're going to explain everything from setups. We're going to explain entries. We're going to explain contingencies. We're going to put this all in context. There are six parts to this video that I'm going to play for you one by one. If there's something that you'd like for me to play back again, frame by frame, in slow motion, make sure to leave a comment. Um, yeah, we're going to get right into it. So once again, a huge thanks to James Lynn, Judo Black Belt, FMA practitioner. Currently, he is studying uh, out of Pekiti University, um, and he's training with the boudoir guys. And for those of you who don't know, the boudoir, shoot, we're still trying to figure it out. Basically, it's a group of guys. They're all instructors, except for me. And we go into my garage, and we explore concepts. And like I said, today's concept is going to be very very specific let's start let's start broad right this is an fma based video this is a an fma stick grappling video this is an fma stick grappling takedown video specifically exploiting and manipulating the overhook so in this first video that i'm about to play um we are going to bait the opponent to grab our stick and we're going to capitalize so basically however way you enter into the clinch we're going to show some later but you enter into the clinch you've got your opponent's weapon right on an overhook you have your weapon free obviously first choice is to smash the shit out of that guy if that's not an option here is a bait for them to actually grab the stick because you know right you have their weapon hand right? Yours is free. Their instinct is going to grab that stick. And what James is going to show us is we're actually going to bait. We're going to manipulate that natural instinct to facilitate a takedown. So I'm going to play that video for you now. Again, if, if you join in late or if there's something you'd like to see closer in slow motion, please let me know in the comments. And uh, I'm going to play it back frame by frame. So here's that video. This is all about baiting this stick grab when you already have um an overhook on their weapon side all right here it is so we can, uh, follow it up okay so let's say here you're not gonna oh fuck <laughs> let me just let go yo i like that can you do it again so over, you're at over hook. Hook. ready yeah go okay. yeah oh. so you have my stick but you're not in a, you're not in a good defense position. One more time. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hit you. You've got a Yeah. Just go. Oh. Right. You just go. So, would it make sense to let go of the weapon or no? But, so I grab here. So let's see your stick comes forward. I grab it. So you just let go and just go oh, this way. Yeah. So I'm holding on, but I'm just like, Completely open for being thrown. Shit, bro. One more time. I'll leave her in. Oh, you might have a one. Here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I'll just fucking give it to you. He's just gone. James, that's great. <laughs> All right, there it is. So that's the first part. That was part one of six. We're going to go through this methodically. So that's more or less the setup, right? And if you stick fight, you know this is not some bullshit reference point. It doesn't actually happen. This stuff really happens a lot. Um, you know, we either the opponent enters in with an angle one, you roof, and then you're able to snag. That happens a lot. All right, so the next part of the video, part two of six, remember there are six parts, and remember that if you are missing some points um here you go i'm just gonna put it in the bottom shabam super easy oh yo the little secret of uh the boudoir is revealed check this out oh wow. you see that you all know what that is right you know what that is. people know what that is 
people know what that little squiggly squiggly anyway we're gonna go to part two <laughs> sorry about that all right we're gonna go to part two of um Stick grappling takedowns, manipulating the overhook. So this is what happens if you get a shallow overhook. What can happen when your overhook isn't deep enough? We're going to explore one vulnerability. Here is uh, James Lynn and myself in the boudoir. I can't get this over your shoulder. How do you get around your body? Mm -hmm. And I just close it and punch it tighter. Right. But if you're shallow on this one, here, I still get this. Yeah. So oh, yeah, that's, that's just an observation from there. Yeah, that's right. We're going to play that one more time. Um, that was that was too quick. All right, here it is. So if, you're, if your overhook is too shallow, here's what someone like James Lynn can do to your ass. My ass. And again, the problem is if you're shallow, I can still get this. Yeah. Because if you overreach me, I can't get this over your shoulder. I can get around your body. Mm -hmm. And I just close it and punch it tighter. Right. But if you're shallow on this one, here, I still get this. Yeah. So that's oh, yeah, that's, that's just an observation from there. Yeah, that's right. Notice James said this is based on an. Just an observation. None of these things we are completely sold on. The boudoir is all about labbing these things, right, dudes? Um, there are so many things that can happen in stick fighting, so many things that can happen in the clinch that to say, you know, that this is bullshit or that's whatever. You just got to get in there and figure it out. The infinite potential of what can happen is infinite. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. We're going to go to video three now. Um, we're going to go to a takedown counter. Here it is. So definitely if somebody catches me shallow. I go to circle the outside. Circling to the outside. Because you circle the outside, even if I can hit you, this is not going to have a lot of power. You know, at least my thought. So if I want to try to hit you here, you're standing here, I can still yeah. hit you. You move over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. One when you I can hit you. But this is, position. This is you have a much better position. Than you. Yeah. What, so here, if you're, you want to get up too, right? Don't you want to get yeah, up? Yeah. I mean, everyone's in the west now. And then you just okay. back backwards. Lots of good. Lots of choices. We just yeah. happen to do one turn. Once again, there it is. You have lots of choices. We're just, we just happen to be working on this one. I'm going to play this one back one more time. Note again what happens when you're. Um, when your overhook is too shallow, this counter is pretty badass. Later in the video, later in the podcast, we're gonna discuss some bad things that could happen, particularly when you're fighting a big dude. Uh, we're gonna talk about safety uh, considerations for your opponent. I know, we're supposed to try to kill this guy, right? These are supposed to be swords or whatever, and we're supposed to be super mean, badass people who just wanna injure others. That's, that's not the case with the boudoir. We're gonna explore this from multiple angles, none of which is aimed at purposefully injuring your training partner. Now, when it comes to a potential application, if you happen to find yourself uh, in a stick fight in real life, well then go ahead, overcrank that shit. But later again, we're gonna talk about um, safety considerations for this technique, because it can be, it could be really nasty. But for now, we're gonna go to video four of six, where James Lynn talks all about chaining these attacks together, not to rely on any one of these tactics and have contingencies for when they fail. And now, again, because really the options are infinite, you cannot train for every contingency, but when you manage energy and you have, um, you know, I know sensitivity training is so overused in martial arts, but this really is sensitivity training. Um, uh, what else can we call it other than sensitivity training? It's like you're getting exposed to moments that you're going to be presented with in application. And just to be clear one more time, the application is stick fighting as a combat sport, not self-defense, right? We're wearing masks. I don't think I need to explain this to you guys. Um, anyway, so here's video four of six, James Lynn talking all about chaining these attacks and not relying on any one of them to work. Here it is. Mm. 
I usually go here. That's my, that's my go-to. You need that angle one? This is, this is my go-to. But I, I think I'm, I'm committing myself maybe too early. Yeah. But I'm gonna stop it right there. Um, that's a really important point, right? Whenever I get to that clinch, I automatically want to close that gap. And for the most part, you know, that's not a bad strategy. But when when I realize that that is my tendency to the point where it's almost predictable, um, then you run into problems, right? You people 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 can peg you down and that's not what you want. You want to be as versatile as possible. And this is also why I'm a big, big proponent in studying multiple martial arts. And if you're not going to study multiple um, Filipino martial arts, um, at the very least, play with people from different arts so that you can get looks and, and energies and intentions, maybe, um, outside of your own circle, right? So we're going to play this. We're going to continue. Sorry for interrupting you, James. But I just thought that that was a really, really important point um, that I came up with in that moment is that, wait a minute, every time I get into this position, I always do this. And so here I'm beginning to discover, okay, maybe... Maybe I need to explore this um, this idea that I'm becoming predictable. So here it is, James Lynn talking about chaining your attacks. Very judo. Mm. I usually go here. That's my that's my go to. You need that angle one. This is this is my go to. But I, I think I'm I'm committing myself maybe too early. Yeah. Well, I mean, here it's like, okay, we're basically like, and then like this and is like, what I usually yeah, do. Something along those lines. But my first instinct isn't even right now for me, thinking about holding my weapon. I'm like, I'm going to try to throw you. Just because I'm like, okay, my weapon's out of play. Yeah. Except for doing this stuff. So I'm going to use this as a lever or something else. So even there, like, even when we're pinched and hunched over, okay, I'm going to be like, yeah, 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 to grab, grab the leg. Or the more special, right? Yeah. The Mark Special. That's Mark Medieros. We call that the Mark Special now. You don't have an advantage any more than I do, right? Well, not necessarily the outside of you here, so I can still do this. Okay. And so Mark does. So Mark, I can do that though, can't I? I can do it too. Exactly. So this is, this is really 50 50. This is 50 50 right now. So good. Yeah. But what I was getting at is you have to just change an angle somehow or something, right? Yeah. So can we play with this energy a little bit? James? So, can we so play with this energy a little bit? Right? So right now with your legs back, it's hard to attach. Right. So it doesn't work if your leg is back. I'll likely try to go for something. Yeah. And then you will escape it. Yeah. 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 That's, oh, nice. Dope. Let's just shoot over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One more time. Uh, let's, let's earn it. Yeah, no, you got me there. But I think you, what you did was you got my energy going up first yeah. by going for, for sure. I did this, so you're going up. Did you try to drop your level and try to go for like a single? Oh, the the mark special. It's still again just judo. When you're attacking about combinations. Yeah. You never sing like if you're just doing a singular attack and only do single ones, you're unlikely to get it. So you have to suck it up. So, so there you there you go, man. Sorry, Mark was distracting me. Another member of the boudoir. But yeah, you know, when I first observed Mark Medeiro's fight, he loved going for that big outside uh, outside reap, planting his entire body weight on you as you go back. And if you don't get to um, be exposed to that energy, uh, it's it's freaking scary. It's really scary. I hate Mark and his freaking stick takedowns. They're pretty brutal. All right, so that was James Lynn. Anyway, he's talking about chaining attacks, right? Not to rely on any one thing. And and you know, I think when we stick fight or when whatever, when we do martial arts, we like to we like this concept of being like a step ahead or three steps ahead. That's really super hard, right? Um, because at any point in, in this imagined sequence where you're three steps ahead, 
if things go wrong at step two or in step one, you, you know, you can't just continue blindly into whatever you think your sequence was supposed to end up looking. You got to adapt, right? So I think this is what James Lynn is saying here. And um, towards the end there, maybe you saw a really important element of the boudoir in that we got to feel the energy. I actually asked James, hey, let me feel that again. Let me feel different energies. Let, what if I... What if I tried to stand up? You know, what are you going to do? What if I tried to circle out? What are you going to do? So anyway, transitioning into the next video, but uh, dang. All right. Who wants to be a member of the boudoir? Those are our membership rules down there. Just be cool, man. Be cool. Be cool to one another. Train with humility, creativity, and passion. That's how you become a member of the boudoir. If you want, go to martialartist.ca and cop yourself one of these dope ass semi girly sweaters boudoir anyway where was i where was i where was i oh yeah we were going to move on to video five of six where we're going to talk about specifics right so a big part of um manipulating the shallow overhook is circling out you can't stay there um and in this video that i'm about to show you james is going to show us a shortcut because what, what I did was when I got to that position, anyway, it's better if I just show you the damn video, all right? So this is all about taking the shortcut to circling out, which could be a takedown in and of itself. You'll, you'll understand you'll, once I play it. Here's James Lynn. Don't automatically. Yeah. Ah, once you're out there, let's just listen. Why did I find my foot after the clinch here? Oh, because I'm trying to usually try to do that. Right? So I gotta resist that. Or if you happen to be that deep, just kick back my way first. So a little hook. Let's see you're your stepping deep here, foot's here. Mm -hmm. Right? So instead oh, of kick it back. back. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. And then you just get back and get back. <laughs> I'm so enthusiastic. So that could be a take back. That could be a take back. So it gets me to anyway. So that's how I do attack like uh, my judo with your mom. Right? So if I can attack your leg, I throw you, I throw you. If I don't, I just open your legs up for like my next attack. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And it keeps knocking me off balance. Right? Yeah. Circles, 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 circles. Right. Dude! <laughs> Man, I get enthusiastic. Yo, I'm going to play this one back for you. I'm going to make some announcements. Uh, this is a really important one. Nice little detail here. Oh, look, I'm still here. Yeah, I'm going to make this full screen so you guys can get a better look. And I'm also going to remove this banner uh, because it kind of gets in the way. So I'm just going to remove this banner for a second. I'm going to remove myself. And then we are going to uh, discuss what is actually happening here. Boom. Oh, we're going to move this guy out of the way. So the reason I have my foot placed here is because I'm trying to get distance to reach this stick over here. Where I need to be is behind, behind James's leg, right? So I need to, number one, we need to, we need to fight here first, right? We need to fight. This is where the fight is going to be, right? He's going to try to smash me. I'm going to try to grab that stick. But I'm gonna. We need to abandon that fight eventually, right? Because to be honest, I'm still vulnerable here. I need to get to the outside here, right? So I'm here. I need to be here. And what James Lynn is saying is that instead of circling about it and being nice, he's just like, take the damn shortcut. Take the shortcut. Cut, right? Here. Cut. Boom. Right there. Right, we're here, cut out, and then you're to the outside. Instead of what I was doing earlier, which was, right, going around. So that's what we call that, the shortcut. And uh, I just made that up. We're, we're, we're calling it the shortcut. All right, show it one more time. Instead of, I'm here, just kick that out and then start circling. Cool, cool. Hope that made sense. So now, yeah, we're nearing the end of our saga over here, and we are going to 
finally talk about safety considerations. Um, there's a lot more to this video, but a big chunk of it is safety, especially if you're fighting like a big dude and you really got him locked and it's technically sound and you're about to take this dude for a flight. Um, be careful. It's probably not something that, man, you want to do. Uh, I, guess, I suppose it depends on the context. By the way, these are six videos. It was actually a 14 part series, but I just, this is really all just a test um, to see if I can manage this, to see if this is watchable, to see if this is something that people would actually tune in to see. I didn't know I was going to do this after um, mine and James's session at the boudoir today, but it worked out. So without further ado, um, what else do I have here? I got. Uh, I got this. If you have a question or comment, holla. If you want me to review past material because you missed it, we can rock that too, hombre. Anywho, here is part six of six, safety and consideration for your opponent. <laughs> I flew there. So like that's a uh, that's not strict judo. That's like jujitsu aikido. Did he just say jujitsu aikido? <laughs> this guy tossed me, man. Holy crap! If I do that to a big guy, I break his arm. I mean, I gotta be careful with that. You gotta be careful about like. This is very easy to go with that, and you, know, you may injure the eye on the way down. Yeah, I but don't definitely to... like when you over here, so you take a shallow move. And you're going to go here. Okay, yeah, that's slower. But I think for sure you're going to still have problems with that. Boy! <laughs> Let me find some energies here. So, oh, sorry. I'm going to give you an energy and just fight it, but it's going to be real slow. Okay. Okay, how long is that? I go up, I go over the power, I circle, I just keep circling. I turn this way. No, that's not smart. You just talk to yourself around harder than more. Cool. Um, <laughs> you took me for a flight, man. You guys want to see that? I kind of want to see that. Let's go see that. Let's go see. <laughs> Can you guys see this? Or was that one? This one. Whoa! You can see how bad this can get, man. You know, like we earned this moment. And the reason I was hitting the ground there was just to kind of simulate that I'm, I'm going to try to be smashing this dude, right? This is not a free giveaway, but we're going to play this back in real time, dudes. Um, I got, I think, two, possibly. Yeah. That was two. That was two um two tappity taps. We're gonna go full screen, let you guys have a better look at this stuff. Um <clears throat> damn James, bro, that's freaking Yeah. Yeah. Oh god. I think he does it again. I'm like, please, sir, may I have some more. Like, okay, watch this sequence. Boom. Right? We see this a lot. Roof block. I overhook. <laughs> and then he just... Peace. That's key right there. You see the positioning of my elbow? That's actually where the leverage is being created. Sorry, not my elbow. It's like my forearm and my shoulder there. Right? There is a video that we talk about. Like, what if I extended this up? Unfortunately, that video got uh, corrupted. But basically what happens is if I extend this this bend and I try to go up, he's gonna get a reverse um, arm lock on me and it's gonna be a bad time. Even worse than, <laughs> look how high my legs are. I can't even break the fall on that side because dude's got my friggin' damn. All right, so this is when we're talking about like safety considerations, guys, because like you take someone down like that, you just never know where that stick's gonna end up, could, could end up on someone's back and smashing them. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. The guys at the boudoir, um, yeah, whenever they can, usually on Wednesdays they come over 
and there's there's almost never a plan like i said all these guys are instructors like i'm the only non-instructor there but i think what i bring to the table is i ask questions you know and i'm i'm willing to i'm willing to uh i guess i don't, don't want to sound cool or nothing but I'm, I'm willing to pay like the fee to actually learn and and sometimes it's it's painful I've not, I've not been injured, right? There's a difference between, um, you know, getting hurt by your training partner happens all the time. It's a different story when you get injured by your training partner. Sometimes that's a fine line. Um, but so far, none of the dudes at the, uh, at the boudoir has, uh, injured me yet. We'll see. I'm just joking. Anyway, guys, if there's anything that you want um, these guys to cover in the future, so let me see if I can even frig. Like we got Mark Medeiros, who's an absolute monster of a dude. Like he's a JKD guy, but not like a pretend JKD guy. No offense, no offense. But like he's a legitimate JKD guy in that he takes boxing and he boxes with boxers. He does Muay Thai and he Muay Thai's with Nak Muay's, right? Um, you know, he has several grappling pedigrees to include, you know, combat submission wrestling and jujitsu under Scott Taylor, um, Muay Thai under Kevin Seaman, just like this dude is stacked and he's not, he's not satisfied with, you know, just academically knowing it, he wants to challenge himself. So we've got, we've got him, we've got, you know, coach Steve Dinamo, which I'm still honestly uncovering parts of his background that are just absolutely surprising to me, but he's done it all. Uh, pancreation, uh, big on wrestling, big on judo, big on jujitsu, um, and huge on Balintawak, huge on Balintawak. Um, he really believes in the Balintawak concepts and he integrates it really, really well with some JKD training methodologies, which for me, um, is great, is great because, uh, I get to, I get to ask questions and I get to, to change the nature of engagements anyway. Steve Dinamo, another uh, founding member of the Boudoir. You know, of course, we got uh, Justin Patricio Fernando, um, who is a Pikiti Tertian, but he's also a Muay Thai guy. Um, he's a guy who runs the Kali program over Combat Arts, and they spar a lot, and they spar very, very hard. Um, Guru Joe Apostol, who, like, <sighs> the dude's a joker, to be honest. Um, he's full of life. He exemplifies, you know, the Filipino spirit, but this dude is so well-trained. You know, I, I think you'll find this with a lot of Filipino martial artists in that you got to really be careful with the guys who are, who kind of downplay a little too much and who joke around a little too much. I think those guys are, are, are the ones to, uh, to watch. So, um, and of course we've got James Lynn, you know, who is a judo black belt member of the PTTA. Uh, he took a different kind, different styles of stick fighting in the past, um, but he's he's getting back into it. And then you know we have like our community that includes guys like Jazz and Terrence and just Sean Zerger, even though he's actually not been to the boudoir. I consider him a member of the boudoir. And then basically, yo, I consider a lot of people part of the boudoir. Honestly, I hang out like Alex Ormaza, boudoir member, just exuding positivity training with humility and creativity and passion and um you know practically open-minded i would say you know we don't need to be like open open-minded like geez uh, you know chi balls and things like that right sometimes people misconstrue what misconstrue what open-minded open-mindedness actually is it doesn't mean that you need to like something right it just it just means you um, you put in your due diligence and you explored it um, with an open mind and with an open heart at some point. It doesn't mean you're going to necessarily adopt those things. It just means that you gave it an open and honest shot. So those are the requirements to, to be a member of the boudoir. And like I said, I consider many of you already members of the boudoir. Um, this is so far the only thing that we have. <laughs> You know, we're probably going to make more, you know, boudoir apparel, I guess. And we're not really in it for the money with regards to, you know, like no one's going to break the banks, you know, selling sweaters or anything. It's just a sign that, you know, I think people like that. People like uniforms and identifiers. 
Anyway, I'm talking a lot. Thank you guys very much. Uh, Kane, thank you for your comments. Um, Alex, thank you very much. I uh, Yeah, you liked it? You like that? I'm going to pop that, yo. Yes, very insightful. I enjoy this kind of a podcast, but not really. Exactly. So, hey, Alex, while you're here, man, I would like to welcome you on in a, a future episode. Um, just send me the videos you want to discuss and we can talk about it. Um, yeah, dudes, if, if I forgot to mention anyone's names, I apologize. I'm trying to manage so many things here. I think I'm getting better at it, but I'm going to do more pilot episodes make a whole ton of mistakes before I actually launch something for realsies. Cause like I said before, uh, if I'm going to do a podcast or a series of podcasts, I want to make it like, you know, special. And I want the people who come onto the show to get a real benefit, like a real, real benefit. Right. So, and this goes back to just wanting to support you guys. So go make some products, right. Don't be afraid to, you know, set humility aside sometimes when you're writing your bios and you're and you're making your videos. Um, there's a time for humility. Typically, marketing, you kind of want to tone down the humility a little bit because you want to present the best version of yourself. But the point I was trying to make is that if you have a product um, that makes you money, which helps put food on the table and helps you be a better mom or dad. I want to be able to support that while supporting myself, right? So maybe in the future, the Boudoir Weekly Podcast will have commercial breaks, right? That's going to happen. Um, maybe the Boudoir Podcast is going to have sponsors. But what we're going to try to do is not be like sellouts and bitches about it. We're gonna, if anyone's going to sponsor us, it better be some dope shit. Um, otherwise, fuck it. Um, and I should probably stop swearing. Because uh, if I'm going to upload this on YouTube, I'm going to I'm going to destroy the reach. I'm talking. I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> just talking to myself. Hey, Steve. Thank you very much. Um, Alex, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate you. I think a Carolina boudoir is in order. Yeah, our first satellite location. And it's a dope one, too. It's Guru Alex Armaza. Hey, Guru Alex, what's your karate style again? It's some badass one, isn't it? It's 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 one where you actually, like, you know, try to hurt each other and stuff. Yeah. Plus, this guy's a Balintawak legend. Super fast. Quick story about Alex Armaza. As I was wearing my protective mask, I, you know, we, we were testing it out. And uh, I'm like, yo, Balintawak, mofa, you know? You're supposed to be a boxer, right? Let's see this. So I was like, okay. <laughs> this dude gave me like a standing knockout. It's legit, man. Like Belen to walk at those levels, they'll freaking smash your face. Anyway, yeah, he gave me a st standing knockout. That was nuts. Um, Coach, Coach Steve Dinamo, thank you very much, man. You've been instrumental in my development. Like I learned so much from so many people, but you, you know, for almost two years now, you've been consistently coming over and filtering the knowledge that I receive so that I can alchemize it into skill. That's a very, very special, very special place in my heart, right? And now the boudoir guys are coming in um, and doing the exact same thing, just e exploring the crap out of these concepts, right? We might as well. We live, in an, we live in an era where we have unparalleled access to information, and I think to a degree we're kind of squandering that. We're just digesting so much without actually – you know, testing these out and, you know, ah, oh, Bruce Lee quote, right? Like, make it your own. You got to make it your own, whatever that quote is. Um, I'm just, I love Bruce Lee, man. I love Bruce Lee. Um, Mark Medeiros. Yes. James, thank you. Today was dope. Today was dope. Um, <laughs> standing knockout. All right, homies. It's getting late. It's 11 o'clock. Um, I'm going to do this more often. This has been a lot of fun. In the future, I'm going to have either somebody, someone sitting here, or it's going to be one of you guys remotely from wherever you are. Just make sure of this, all right? Um, I, I just I don't want this thing to be masturbatory. Let's serve a purpose, right? So when you come on, the purpose will be for you to share your knowledge with us, but we're going to support whatever endeavor that you want to plug on the show. I think that's super duper fair. And in the future, we may even have like a donation button. You know what I mean? Like, Alex, you do something and it's like somebody goes, yo, shit, I've been trying to figure that out for six months. Here's a, you know, here's 50 bucks because otherwise I would have wasted more time trying to figure out, 
you know, a reverse punch or whatever. Datu Tim Hart, man, my homeboy. Thank you very much. You missed it, but that's okay. Watch the replay. We'll have you on the show as well. Datu Tim is, I think, one of two people that I know who actually own a brick and mortar dedicated to just Filipino martial arts, which I think is dope. And one day it's going to be the reverse, you know, like the Muay Thai and the Jiu Jitsu Academy. They're going to they're going to want Filipino martial arts in there. Right. Um, just like, you know, a Filipino martial arts club or, or a Muay Thai club may have a, a Jiu Jitsu program. Right. Just to you, you guys get it. Um, my, I have huge, huge hopes for for the Filipino martial arts. I'm studying the stock market. So I'm studying the fundamentals of who's going to be in charge of FMA in the future. And I'm, I'm stacking my chips on it, to be honest. I'm stacking my chips on Filipino martial arts because the ambassadors, the people who are about to receive the torch from their grandmasters um, with or without permission, let me say that, uh, they're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. They're forward thinking, yet they want to preserve the art, history, and culture of their chosen martial art. This is going to be a crazy, crazy next generation. And all of this is going to bleed into professional combat sports, guys. Like We're already seeing it. We're seeing Rose Namajunas, for example, who has a title fight coming up, doing some brada with Greg Nelson. And uh, even Greg Nelson has cited you know, um, Rick Fay and a whole bunch of other like well-established instructors who like they almost trick their MMA fighters into doing Filipino martial arts drills, right? Because again, um, you don't need to know what it's called. You don't need to know the terminology. You just kind of, you got to have some understanding, especially if you're a fighter and you're just taking it in from your coach, you got to have some understanding of what universal principles, what attributes we're intending to develop and how that integrates to this total fight plan. And Filipino martial arts is, is valid. You know, it can enrich every other martial art. Certainly, it can it can enrich um, athletic performance. It can enrich combat sport. All of it. Uh, Guru Alex, this time of the night was perfect for me. Dojo closed, family in bed, and I'm feeling good while watching some insightful analysis of fight footage. Homie, my pleasure. Um, so the wife and my eldest son, they're still up. So I'm going to be a dad for a second, but I thank you guys very much for joining the Boudoir Weekly pilot episode featuring james lynn judo black belt you guys have a good night peace out oh ah, in the future we're gonna have like a cool outro but for now i'll just do it for you poo, poo, doo, 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 weekly. Whoosh.